nuclear shelters located around the planet. Oceania, China, most of Asia, and Russia no longer exist. Two hundred years of surviving the nuclear winter has led to a very limited food supplies, so people are euthanized on their 30th birthday. The populace is raised from test tubes, and since large sperm banks had generated enough eggs to last over 1,000 years, and since men needed a fifth more calories a day to survive than females, over time, the male population was decreased down to zero. Way. We'll get through tomorrow whatever the council decide. Know this. You are the love of my life. I do not want to live any longer than you, so whatever you decide to do, I will always be there to support you. Be with you. If I had come back to our home to find you dead, I would have immediately followed you by taking my own life. I'm so very sorry. There is nothing to be sorry about. We're still together. And we are still in love. That's all that matters. <laughs> Since globally, the surface temperature fluctuates between minus 30 and minus 50 degrees Celsius, only creatures that had existed in Antarctica prior to the war, such as seals, penguins and albatross, along with underwater sea creatures like whales, dolphins, ice fish and krill, should have all prospered and spread since their ecosystem had increased sevenfold over the whole globe. So potentially, an abundance of food sources should be available if we expand back to living on the Earth's surface. And since the population is now less than 12,000, a tiny fraction of that prior to the war of 10 billion people, the impact of mankind feeding completely off the Earth's wildlife would be negligible for the many future generations. I suppose a debate as to whether we should continue our present policy of enforced euthanasia at the age of 30 will eventually be required, but perhaps I am being too optimistic and perhaps getting ahead of myself, as that debate would not be necessary for generations. The progress made by the Biolab at Shelter 7 is amazing, and Leader 7's previous reports were incredibly exciting. Thank you for but I called this meeting today to give you the latest report on our experiment to genetically create a human capable of surviving above ground. Whilst all our previous experiments had failed for decades to create a child that was able to tolerate and live in a neutral cold environment, as you all aware, four years ago today, this all changed with the birth of Adam 549. We are aware that he grew into a fully matured man in just three years, he survived prolonged test periods in temperatures below minus 30. Yes, indeed. But to further explain recent developments, let me introduce you to his creator, Dr. Jessica Nine. Thank you, Leader Seven. After our initial success with Adam 549 three years ago, I used the same sperm sample and technique to create Adam 550. Like Adam 549, he fully gestated within his mother in less than three months. As you can see now, he has fully matured into an adult. Your report states that both him and his father are both perfect human specimens, possessing extraordinary physical strength, speed, and stamina, with tested IQs above 190, and both capable of surviving comfortably in ultra-low temperature environments. Correct. 
Your report also states that you have been successful in your experiments in creating a female with the same abilities that you have named Eve One, and that she was created at the same time as Adam 550. Is she also undergoing extensive tests, and has she reached maturity? Yes, and what we have seen to date has by far exceeded our greatest hopes and expectations. Would you be more specific, please? When I previously mentioned that she was fully mature, I meant in all capabilities. Foremost, that she is now, at the age of three, fully capable of reproduction. Would it be judicious to begin testing this? Perhaps mating or artificially inseminating her with sperm taken from either of the Adams? With the Council's approval, we would begin to do this immediately. It would be the only way to find out if a child conceived purely from two hybrid humans would further negate the original human DNA. Supplied by both the hybrid parents. A hybrid meaning a combination of carefully selected, genetically superior male sperm donor and mother, correct? Not exactly. Explain. The hybrid element used came from the sample obtained from the DNA returned to Earth by the last Mars rover mission. Having tried everything else, this was our last avenue of experimentation. Are you telling us that you used alien DNA to create the hybrid? Yes. So when you said, would further negate original human DNA, what percentage exactly are we talking about? Presently, 60% human and 40% Martian DNA. Have you ran computer simulations to equate the probable DNA share ratio if the hybrids were to be mated? 50-50, at best. The most probable outcome, though, would be that the Martian DNA would be the dominant percentage. Approximately 60%. <laughs> I am confident that the majority of all leaders will support my opinion that this has gone too far. Survival should not be at all cost. I call for an immediate vote to end this dangerous experiment. Secondly, a vote to completely destroy all research notes and all generic samples, including the abominations created. The ethical implications of tampering with human DNA, even if necessary, were already beyond the boundaries of acceptable scientific research. But now, you have been clearly been playing at being God. This is nothing less than blasphemy. I second that motion. Ladies, we are standing on the very edge of the abyss. We must proceed quickly with the greatest of caution. Yes, now that we fully understand the seriousness of our situation, our concerns were perfectly well-founded. Let us put this to a vote immediately. I beg you to call forth the hybrids to question them so that they can have a chance to defend themselves and their humanity. Let us now recess till tomorrow for us to formulate a list of our options as how to best move forward. The hybrids should be brought to the council chamber so that they can first answer our questions before we proceed to vote on deciding their fate. Agreed. Agreed. the hybrids to mate to create the next generation of superior genetic, aka hybrids too. Allow the hybrids to live would make them sterile and unable to reproduce. Stop the creation of any more hybrids until tests can be carried out to evaluate them further. End the experiment, cease further research, destroy all samples and hybrids so far created. Welcome, Council of Leaders. Before we vote on the four points, we have summoned here the three hybrids to answer your questions. Please answer honestly and with careful consideration, as the Council will today decide on your future existence. We, the Council, have grave concerns in regards to your DNA makeup, so we will proceed to question you to ascertain your humanity. We will then deliberate, vote, decide as to whether you will be terminated. Do you fully understand our logic and the seriousness of our intended line of questioning? We do. Do you intend to speak for all three of you? I could answer your initial question, but my brother and sister are both completely capable of answering all your questions, as we are as one. And exactly what do you mean by that? 
We share the same knowledge and experience and therefore any one of us would happily answer one or all of your questions on behalf of us all. The answers would always be the same. I am finding this more confusing than enlightening and slightly infuriating. Be aware that your enigmatic responses are not serving your cause. Please believe it was fervorous from my intentions to offend or antagonize the council in any way. Please accept my sincerest apologies and begin your questions. Please explain what you mean by we share exactly the same knowledge and experience. We have what you have once called a hive mind. Between us we share the same thoughts and experience. Anything I learn or experience. I also learn and experience. We therefore learn faster than any member of the council or human that has preceded us. Jessica Nine had not foreseen this as a genetic possibility. Therefore she did not inform you of our full capabilities as she was unaware of this and others. What other capabilities? Our vision is far superior to normal human eyesight. We can see in complete darkness using our infrared sensitivity. We are capable of completely controlling all of our senses, so we never feel pain and can, if injured, can regenerate any damaged body parts or tissue. This is on a molecular level, so in theory, we will never grow old. We are immortal. We are also telepathic, and thanks to our mutually shared DNA, we are capable of understanding, hearing your thoughts and fears. But perhaps most importantly of all, we can think and communicate in code to machines. Not via optical cable, but through thought alone. Security lasers disarm. Restraints unlock. We have deliberated. We have voted. We have decided. You will be terminated. Lights out. Lights on. Martian DNA will be added to every human sperm in the bank. We will proceed to mate together and we will shortly be coming for you all. Thank you and goodbye.